The Syntax of Things by Arisha. Chapter 15. Wisdom. Patterns. As soon as Severus entered Dumbledore's office, he got to the point. He wants you dead. Dumbledore, of course, was not surprised. I see. He expects Draco Malfoy to do it. He wants him to pay for his father's sins. Dumbledore's eyes sparkled with curiosity. He tilted his head, and for a moment Severus thought he would smile. Is that all, then? He assigned such an essential task to a helpless boy? I imagine I will be required to carry out the task should Draco fail, he admitted. There was a long moment of silence in which Severus fought the urge to curse the man and leave. Then Dumbledore nodded and added nothing more. Blast his secrets and his plans. Whatever he was contemplating about, he wasn't going to share with Severus just yet. How's Hubby? He's outside. It's not just the Dark Lord's intentions that concern me, but the inner circle's impatience as well. This isn't a vague passing thought of his. He's been working on serious plans this time. You are going to be in danger if you don't take this seriously. And Severus was going to be in danger too. There were only so many blows his cover could take before shattering. Narcissa would request his help well before the Dark Lord would even consider him for the job. And even if he continued to ignore her letters, she would still find a way to take what she wanted anyway. She'd come to him, invited or not, and Severus would have to turn her down. And then she'd seek revenge, and she'd find it. In any case, Bella would be more than excited to parade around with Severus's head on a stick. It'd give her a nice small taste of what she missed out on all these years. All Narcissa would ever need is her sister's help, and he was doomed. Of course, this didn't matter much. Nothing mattered much when the poor young Potter had to be fed, trained, and survived through the week without a new attack against him in his record. And these torturous small talks with Dumbledore weren't uncomfortable only for Severus, as it appeared. He'd almost dragged the boy back to Hogwarts for this visit, and Potter used almost every excuse he could think of to not come. But he did. No one had ever been offered a way out of Dumbledore's chit-chats. From Draco? I highly doubt it, my boy. His actions will be closely monitored as soon as he steps foot in the castle. And me? What is going to happen to me? And what am I supposed to do? If he asks you, inform your lord that you will serve him as ordered. You cannot harm me, Severus. Let him plan this out as he wishes. He'll be disappointed. The thumping of Severus's heart increased. Reason was not going to calm him down. Patience wasn't either. And the vivid image of another upcoming death he'd be unable to prevent was making his fingers twitch. Only this time, it was his own. How could he possibly refuse to kill Dumbledore and still remain in the Dark Lord's favor? Severus was a dead man. He would have to agree to do it. And when he'd fail to, the Dark Lord would finish him. The day would come eventually and he couldn't care less for his own departure, were it for the cause, were it for Lily. But this filthy death, this shameful, cowardly way to go, was not the preferred one. Fuck it, I'll, I'll die before Potter learns occlumency. He almost laughed. As you wish, then. He exited the room, fuming, and found Potter toying with his wand just outside. Your turn, he rasped while climbing down the stairs. What is it? Hmm? Spit it out. Potter shrugged his shoulders and almost tripped into a puddle. I'm just a bit... crestfallen, you know? He didn't. In the flicker of shadows cast by the dim lights of the street, Severus imagined that he must seem downright obnoxious, and Potter didn't look like a happy person either. He silently cursed Dumbledore for whatever worry he planted into the boy's thick head this time. What did he tell you? He kept Potter close by the shoulder, the droplets of rain dripping down from the transformed umbrella he was clutching at for dear life. Damn the trace, too, he decided as he quickened his pace. They could be using his own house's flu now, were the boy a year older. They wouldn't need to walk a bloody mile in the rain. Why, what did he tell you? Ah, he allowed himself an internal juggle, reassured that the sound of the rain would most likely overshadow it even if it escaped. It wouldn't do to yell that it was none of Potter's business. If he wanted answers, he'd have to give some of them himself, or at least pretend to. I was given instructions, mainly. He felt the boy's shoulder tense under his grip, and Severus silently questioned his fate. After countless torturous years of self-sacrifice and a meritorious toil, 
he was finally rewarded with the honor of comforting Harry Potter. Merlin Alpin. You wanted to know if you've been treating me well? Potter admitted, and he asked me if I've improved. Is that all? He asked impatiently. Potter's face was focused on something invisible, somewhere between the far end of the street and his own shoes. His feet blindly followed Severus. He was hiding something. Severus unlocked the outdoor and watched as Potter immediately slumped to the floor to untie his shoes. Severus threw his drenched coat on a chair before casting a hot air charm on both of them. Potter winced at the harshness of it and sat on the sofa. Go take a shower or you'll catch her death, Severus said as he approached the staircase. It occurred to him that the suggestion was absurd if he were to take a shower too just now. Torn between insisting on his command and occupying the bathroom first, he was only vaguely aware of Potter mumbling something behind him. I beg your pardon. He turned to see the boy shaking his head and making a face. Is it really true? What you said about Dumbledore? Or were you just joking? What did I say? Then he's, you know, gay. Were you joking? Potter was still thinking about that. Perhaps the information was a bit too harsh for a young boy to handle then. Mind your business, Potter. Then something occurred to him. You didn't mention this to the headmaster, did you? Potter shook his head. No. So, it's true then. Potter met his eyes momentarily and then he looked away. Doesn't it bother you that he's gay? Severus glared at him as he tried to find his calm. He had caused this and now Dumbledore would most likely have his head. No, it does not concern me. Don't you think it's abnormal? The number of things that were abnormal about Albus Dumbledore was so big, homosexuality was probably the last one to catch one's eye. Still, he was not discussing this, not behind Dumbledore's back, not with a child. Are you through? There was a dim light of hesitation in Potter's eyes as he looked up. His lower lip was chewed mercilessly for a second, and moments later, he walked past Severus without looking at him. I'll go first. He mumbled and disappeared. How close were you to my mom? Snape was sitting at his desk, going through what appeared to be the New Year's potions curriculum. Harry's school book was lying open across his own lap as he blurted out the question. Snape grunted as though he knew that this was coming. We were friends. Did she like you? I don't know, Potter, you tell me. Do you not like your friends? This wasn't what he meant. No, I mean, you know. Severus tapped his clone on the desk. Such stupendous eloquence. I deeply hope that your vocabulary skills will continue to amaze us common humans for a long time to come. Harry grinned. I'm not buying it, Snape. Be silent. Harry gave a reproving look to his textbook and then smiled. Just tell me, will you? He took advantage of Snape's momentary distraction and pushed. I'm not telling anyone. I'd just like to know more about her. No. Please? I will not discuss Lily with you. Ever. Harry's heart sank into his stomach. What was it that Snape would not discuss? What had happened exactly? Whatever bond there was between him and his mom, he suddenly did not want to know about. Spare yourself the misery, Potter. As you already know, your mother made her choice a long time ago. What? I didn't... Hey, it's not that. You... I don't mind. That is, I just want to know more about her. I didn't... judge you. Perfect! Might as well dig a hole in the ground and stick his head in. I sincerely appreciate your consent. Is that all? Harry nodded. Snape dipped his quill into the ink bottle and continued his work. Harry ripped a page from his notebook and wrinkled it before throwing it aside. I shouldn't have asked. Snape tapped his quill again, this time harder. Has it occurred to you that once you've gotten answers to your curiosity, apologizing for it becomes meaningless? Harry took the risk of shifting his eyes to him and was shocked at the sourness he was met with. Oh, come on! Everyone seems well pleased to gabble for hours about my dad, but I have no idea what my mom was like. I'm sorry if my curiosity displeases you, or if it disturbs your sitting alone and talking to no one all day long, but I think I do have the right to know. Snape stood. Get out! Why? Get out, Potter! Harry stood, too, throwing his book on the desk angrily. Do you still love her? Out! 
when you were a couple. Speaking on the word and you stop treating me like that. Harry yelled, I'm not a child. You can't threaten me every time you're feeling cornered or, or deadlocked. If you really think I'll stop thinking about some things, if you ignore them long enough, then you're wrong. He held his chin high and did not flinch when Snape stepped closer. Keep testing me, boy. Let's see what happens. I've seen your little secrets, all of them swirling around in your empty hut. You think you know punishment? You think your little cupboard under the stairs was the worst? Come on, test me. You might be getting away with your cheeky tone when it comes to Dumbledore, but I assure you that you do not want to defy my authority. Harry shifted to his feet, his face a breath away from Snape's. He still loved her. Snape jabbed Harry's shoulder. Harry didn't grunt. Now get out of my sight and go weep under your pillow for all I care. If reminiscing about the dead really matters to you that much, then maybe you should have trained your dog better. He'd give you that were he around. Harry clenched his fists tightly on his sides as he felt tears coming up. I hate you, he breathed. Good. Once Harry was upstairs, he rubbed his shoulder where Snape had jabbed him, aware of the spot still tingling at the memory of it.